Welcome to the Niche Podcast, your weekly rundown of the biotech, pharma, clinical research, and life science industries. I'm your host, Dr. Noah Goodson. This week, unique therapies, including anti-opioid overdose, ocular implants, fish skin, UV light, digital therapeutics, and the impact of approvals. The views expressed on the Niche Podcast are those of the host and guests. They do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any organizations or companies with which they are affiliated. I like to admit when I'm wrong. Like the time I thought Moderna shares might be overvalued at $100. Yeah, I I was wrong. Last week, I was wrong again. Maybe. I shared how Merck, MSD outside the U.S., the $11.5 billion acquisition of Acceleron was facing some resistance from a subset of activist investors. I predicted this wouldn't amount to much. More drama unfolded this week as Darwin Global Management added their 4% stake to Avaro Capital's 7% and complaining about major undervaluation. This could mean that my prediction that all of this amounts to nothing could be wrong if more investors jump on board. To vindicate me, the 11.5% stakeholder BMS said this week they'd approve the deal. So am I wrong? Time will tell. Atomus Pharmaceuticals has been granted FDA approval for the noxalone injection Zimmy as an immediate treatment for opioid overdose. Nearly 100,000 deaths in the U.S. were caused by opioid overdose in the last year. Zimmy can be used as an immediate injection to resuscitate the slowed breathing and loss of consciousness that leads to death. The injections are intended to be used in emergencies and as an immediate stopgap while medics arrive. Distribution of Zimhi to high-risk populations and public health services may provide emergency assistance in stopping deaths caused by the growing opioid crisis. Wet, age-related macular degeneration, AMD, impacts 1.1 million people in the United States and is the leading cause of blindness in people over the age of 60. The primary treatment for wet AMD is intraocular injections of a VEGF inhibitor. Genentech's ranubizumab, sold as Lucentis, is a leading therapy. This week, they earned FDA approval for a port delivery system called Susvimo. The ocular implant slowly releases ranibizumab across a longer time frame and can be refilled twice a year. This is a massively improved schedule and patient burden compared to the monthly injections of VEGF inhibitors typically required in treating wet AMD. And by the way, having seen lots of these done in the ophthalmology clinic, they are exactly as unenjoyable as you might imagine. Now, Zosvimo might not be right for everyone, but implantable, stable, ongoing release is likely an improved treatment paradigm, and cutting visits from monthly to biannually is a huge advantage for patients. All are big improvements for treatment of a degenerative, chronic illness. Kyrisis has received FDA approval to market omega-3 Surgibind for use in soft tissue surgeries. The fish-derived skin graft can be used to reinforce soft tissue repair and provide an antibacterial protective barrier in reconstructive and plastic surgeries. Because it's produced from non-mammalian species, there's no risk of viral transfer, allowing the tissue to be more gently treated, thereby preserving some of the protective structural value and maintaining higher similarity to human skin. Omega-3 surgibine can be grafted onto wounds, recruiting human cells, which more rapidly heal the area and ultimately replace the fish skin, while providing a protective barrier in the interim. Zerigo Health has raised a $43 million Series B to drive the commercialization of their at-home UV light therapy for the treatment of psoriasis, vitiligo, and eczema. First, if you don't recognize the name, that's because Zerigo was previously Clarify Medical, and before that, Skylet Medical. Narrowband UVB light has been shown to be beneficial in certain patients in combating multiple skin conditions. Zerigo's product is an at-home, handheld therapy that connects to a smartphone app via Bluetooth. The patient follows the schedule in the app and holds Zerigo's machine over the affected area of skin. 
The machine then shines the light on the affected area according to the specific treatment protocol. UVB light therapy works to combat the impacts of these skin conditions and can be effective in certain populations. The evidence for this particular treatment is relatively weak. One 10-week long trial with just a few participants. But with FDA approval to market and a direct-to-consumer testimony-based sales model, they may be able to illuminate a path forward. Click Therapeutics has raised a $52 million Series B to create digital therapeutics. This market is more than just integrated digital solutions into other therapies like Zergo's app. It's about using digital solutions as a treatment. Their first product, Clicotine, is a smoking cessation app. While not an FDA-approved therapy, Click did conduct a non-placebo controlled trial on the effectiveness of Clicotine in aiding smoking cessation. Now, they have their sights set on treating mental illnesses like depression through digital engagement and are aiming for FDA-approved prescribable digital treatments. It's not yet clear what the financial and prescription model for digital therapeutics will be, but many investors are seeing opportunities for treating behavioral, chronic, and mental health conditions. Click has certainly pulled down big partnerships in the last year. We know from the rest of our lives that digital platforms can dramatically change behavior. Now the question is if they can be utilized for therapeutic purposes. Last week, we highlighted Merck's Keytruda earning a first-line FDA approval for cervical cancer. This specific approval was a major blow to agonist product Balstilumab. The product was on track for an accelerated approval to treat the same indication, but because of a lot of behind-the-scenes processes, they've now had to withdraw their application. While this is technically a voluntary withdrawal, Agonist's perspective is that the FDA cornered them and cut off their route for quick approval. In fact, Keytruda was approved just hours before Agonist got a meeting with the FDA. This basically meant the FDA could say, you need to withdraw accelerated approval because Keytruda is approved for that. This all means that Agonist's balastilumab has to be shown to be superior to the approved therapy. It's challenging to know the back end of these choices, but for Agonis, it certainly appears to be an unbalanced decision. Thanks for joining me on the Niche Podcast, your weekly summary of the top news in the biotech, pharma, clinical research, and life science industries. You can learn more at thenichepod.com or find us on your favorite podcast app. Like, comment, subscribe, and most of all, share with your friends. If you like what you hear, please rate and review. It really helps us. Once again, I'm Dr. Noah Goodson. I'll see you next week. 